Hey what's up you guys, today I'm going to be showing you guys how to make the perfect drift car in Forza Horizon 4. This has actually been requested to me by a couple of my friends because I make pretty decent drift cars. I'm going to be showing you guys today how to do it for yourself. Okay, so first things first is what you're going to want to do is get your, you know, your car. It's kind of, kind of always going to be your first step to building any type of car. You want to get the car. So. I recommend something with a body kit because the wider the car the easier it will be to drift and if you're a beginning if you're you know a beginner drifter you know just first getting into drifting it will be a lot easier to control a lot easier to drift a lot easier to handle you know this will be um, definitely what you want to do so I recommend for a good car one that I've had particularly good experiences with um, when it comes to body kits is the Mazda RX-7 Savannah right here the oldest Mazda you can buy in the game this thing is a beast it doesn't look like it when you first get it but as soon as you actually sit down this thing and make it into a drift car it is absolutely amazing uh, so I'm just gonna get it in stock white right now it's 25 grand too so you have you know no matter how small your budget is you will be coming out probably a uh, pretty low price overall. Now, I want you to, uh, you do need to actually know that no matter uh, what angle you look at this, if you want to make a really good drift car, you're looking at probably 70 grand of upgrades minimum. So make sure you have that. But I mean, most people in this game have over a million dollars. So that shouldn't be too much of a problem. First thing you're going to want to do and I actually don't recommend going into the body kit and putting the preset because you won't get, you know, the exact stuff that you want for it. Uh, I recommend going into custom upgrades instead and going all the way over to conversion and going to body kit and selecting that, selecting it that way. Uh, so we're going to start from the right and go left. First thing, make sure, uh, especially if you're doing a Mitsubishi drift car, always make sure that you have rear wheel drive installed mostly on the on most of the drift cars you will choose uh... they will, will be rear, uh, rear wheel drive but if you want to do something crazier like, like i did at a volvo 850r a little while ago that had to be converted to rear wheel drive and if you want to do a mitsubishi those are going to be, have to be converted because they're all all wheel drive um, second thing you're going to do get a new engine uh... one particular engine that I find to be very very effective in drifting is the uh, rotor racing engine so that's the one that I usually go with when it's available uh, most of my good drift cars have that uh, next up this is the visual customizations uh, this car doesn't have many but um, I would uh, this doesn't really matter you know customize it to however you want it to look it's not a huge deal um doesn't really affect performance at all so next you're going to want to do street tire compound now the reason we do street and not stock is because while street has a little more grip than stock does it also is going to be uh, allowing you to customize your tire pressure stock tires don't allow you to customize tire pressure and tire pressure is one of a one of the few tuning options that are incredibly important in making a drift car. Uh, next you're probably going to want to thicken your tires all the way up to wide because we're going to be popping those out with camber. Uh, so you want to thicken your tires up to the maximum. You don't always have to do this with every car but I do recommend it if you're going to give it camber. Next make your tires pretty thin. Uh, this is actually not that thin. There are some cars that have thinner tires so this should be fine. Uh, but if the tires go to almost a spray paint thin, then you're going to want to not do that because that will just give you too little traction. You won't be able to control it. Next, you're going to want to fully upgrade everything in your uh, drive line and like transmission and all that kind of stuff. Your drivetrain stuff. You always want to make these race. You can only you know help you out by doing that. Uh platform and handling this is where this is another really important one race brakes definitely uh, suspension definitely gonna be drift always gonna be drift 
don't upgrade your anti-roll bars. Uh, I don't think it has a massive effect on your drifting, but I do know, however, that there is kind of a superstition that putting anti-roll bars on your drift car will not make it drift better. Uh, roll cage, this is doesn't really matter, adds weight. Uh, I usually do it just because it looks cool and you get that real racing feel when you sit in it. Um, weight reduction all the way, all the way weight reduction. And then engine, this one just has a restrictor plate. If you have a car with an engine with a restrictor plate, just take the restrictor plate off. But if you have a car that has custom upgrades, you're going to want to put twin turbo on conversion and upgrade twin turbo all the way. That's the only really important upgrade to your engine that you're going to want to do is give it a twin turbo. That is twin turbo exhaust and air intake are the only really important upgrades you can do. But if you want to go all out, you can upgrade your engine all the way. It does it does make a huge difference uh, depending on if you want to do high speed drifting, low speed drifting, and how you want to take corners. Um, Usually I just fully upgrade it because it gets you more wheel spin. The more horsepower you have, the more wheel spin you're going to have. Um, so this one has 718 horsepower. This one's going to be quite crazy. Uh, the last thing, I always forget to do this. It's uh, your rims. Now this doesn't matter at all really. Uh, I'm just going to put some E55s on it because you know you can never go wrong with E55s. Uh, yeah, so that's all of your custom upgrades done, but that's not the important part of the car. Custom upgrades, while they do build the car, they don't tune it. You know, you got to actually go to the tuning menu for that, and that's probably going to be the uh, part that people came to this video for. Uh, while I, you can really do anything with your car custom upgrades and it won't really matter to ha if you tune it right. So this is going to be a bunch of presets of tuning that will work for almost any car. Now it will be different if you're making crazy extremes like the PLP50 or the race trucks. Those are going to have you know different tunes because they're so weird and uh, different than all these other cars. But if you're tuning a JDM car like an RX-7 or a Silvia or a 240SX or stuff like that, they're all going to be generally the same uh, when it comes to these tunes. So first off with tires, I like to leave the front tires um, stock and the back tires, going to bring those up to a maximum of 38. Uh, but I would put it on 37 recently. I've been having some bad experiences with making it 38 PSI. Uh, if you didn't know this, the higher your PSI is, the less traction you have, and the lower it is, the more traction you have. So gearing, what I usually like to do is I like to tune the uh, car's gear so that the sixth gear, the final gear, is touching that top right corner of the little gear box up there. Uh, I like to tune that so that you can, uh, I, I don't know, it's just, it feels right to me whenever I do that. Usually it's not a huge difference, sometimes it is. Uh, alignment, this is a really important one. Camber, you want to make the front tires negative four and the rear tires negative five if you don't know why this is it's because when you pop your wheels out like that at angles with camber there's less tire touching the road so that makes it so you have less traction which means you want to have less traction on the back if you want to drift anti-roll bars you're not going to even be able to do this if you put if you didn't upgrade your anti-roll bars springs you're going to want it as low as possible and you're going to want to stiffen up the suspension this uh, tip can actually be different for each person depending on how adept you are at drifting. If you are a beginner, I'd recommend leaving your springs a little softer. That'll give you a little more traction. If you um, are you know, very good at drifting, then you're going to want to tighten up your springs. That'll make it a little easier to slide. Uh, I'm popping mine all the way over to 900 and uh, 850. But, of course, if you're a beginner, I'd recommend something lower, maybe 700 on the front. Uh, damping arrow, brake, and differential. I don't really use. I don't change it that much. It does. I don't really feel a difference when I change most of these things, not at least anything, uh, you know, different enough to, you know, make me actually find out what tunes I should do for those specific areas. So once you get past springs, you should be basically done with all you need to do. Um, 
yeah, so that's your tunes and your upgrades. Now, finally, it's time to see if we did it right. Take your drift car for a spin, see if you like it. Um, I'm going to go test this one out. This is going to be the second RX-7 Savannah that I've made. If you're doing manual shifting like most people do, then this will be a little easier because second gear is usually preferred for drifting. So this one actually works quite well. I'm pretty happy with this. Um, you want a car that's just going to spin its wheels when you accelerate. That's all you want. That's why we got to get the traction on the back down so that you can have a car that really spins uh, when you accelerate. You don't want a car you're going to have to hit the e-brake. You want a car that you can just you know, gun the accelerator and get drifting. So this one actually works really, really well. I'm very happy with how this one turned out. And uh, I forgot to turn my <laughs> Xbox on to do not disturb. I'm going to have to cut that off. So I'm out here on the road now. And I'm testing out my new drift car. And I really like it. It's uh, turned out really good. The low traction on the back and high traction on the front really keeps the back out. That's why I don't recommend going all the way to 40 PSI on the back because it just feels like it wants to spin so easily. I am in fourth gear here drifting. That's only because I'm actually on a high speed road, you know. Um, and I don't really feel like I need to... <laughs> uh, shift down um, high speed drifting is quite fun but yeah this has been a quick little tutorial on how to tune drift cars I hope you guys have enjoyed you should be able to tune pretty much almost classic sports modern sports any sports car uh, and even you know things like SUVs and sedans those kind of things you should these tunes should work pretty universally for all of them so you shouldn't have too many problems of course you can learn and customize them yourself for how you think it would work better the, these particular little presets of tunes work really well for me though so yeah I hope you guys enjoyed uh, I will be uploading a lot more frequently now um, than I have been before I am trying to get this YouTube channel started, so I would really, really appreciate it if you guys would subscribe and like and comment. This new YouTube algorithm that's been here for a couple months has been really hitting small creators, and especially me, because uh, I'm very small, um, very hard because it's just it's impossible to get into people's recommended feeds, and it's just you know it's a struggle. So if you guys could subscribe, if you guys could like, if you guys could comment, that'd be really, really appreciated. Um, if you guys like more of these tutorials, hit the like. I'll be doing a drag one pretty soon because I know a lot of people are very curious about that. So, yeah, I really appreciate you guys watching. Leave a comment if you made it this far. And, uh, yeah, I'll see you all later.